Hello, I'm Rachel Jones for the Finance News Network. Joining me from Melbourne Energy is Executive Chairman Andrew Purcell. Andrew, welcome to FNN. Thank you, Rachel. Very good morning to you as well. Good morning. Now, first up, could you start with an introduction to the company? Melbourne Energy, uh, we're listed on the Australian Securities Exchange. We uh, have been for over 20 years. We're an oil and gas exploration company uh, with a team that has had many decades of experience working for oil majors. So our motives and our operations are focused on finding world-class size exploration opportunities that we can attract international partners to. Thanks, Andrew. Now, before we talk about your projects, what impact has COVID-19 had on business? The main impact it's had is a restriction on our senior executive team, myself included, being able to travel to our other offices. Uh, We've managed uh, as well as we can. We have very competent people on the ground in Cuba, which is our main sphere of offshore operations at the moment. And it was through the planning stage for our upcoming drilling operation. So communications are good. Interviews can be done by video and meetings as such. So things seem to be returning to normal in Cuba now. International flights have started to resume. Now let's talk about your projects. Can you tell us more about Cuba? It's uh, part of the Gulf of Mexico, a prolific hydrocarbon zone, of course. And it, it indeed has its own very well established and significant oil industry. Um, it has suffered from underinvestment, however. Uh, as a result, there is large running room there to take its uh, extant hydrocarbon resources and develop them, uh, which is our opportunity that we identified and why we moved into Cuba. From a political, uh, fiscal point of view, it, it is a very competent jurisdiction. Uh, the National Oil Company has very experienced, well-educated, capable people. The, the black letter law is very clear and properly administered. Their fiscal terms are competitive. And it's a jurisdiction that we feel very comfortable operating in. And what is the operating environment in Cuba? From an infrastructure point of view, uh, everything's proximate. Uh, there are a number of oil fields across that northern hydrocarbon zone. Uh, we have uh, Varadero, which is an 11 billion barrel field, their principal operating area just a, an hour and a half to the east of Havana on all weather blacktop roads. There's deep water ports nearby, oil terminals, pipelines, refineries. So there's, there's good infrastructure to support their already quite developed oil industry. Now block nine is immediately to the right of that Faradero area that I, I've already mentioned. Uh, and so we're very close, uh, particularly from Australian standards, uh, being able to operate, move people in and out of the country easily, move them in and out of Havana, Varadero to site easily. Uh, and in the case of any success we may have, uh, going into production would be a, a relatively minor uh, consideration as opposed to the big infrastructure spends that would be required in other jurisdictions given the remoteness typically of opportunities of this size. And what is the timeline for Block 9? Well, we started civil works last month. So we put the, uh, the yellow machines on the ground and the people, and we started turning dirt and building roads and drainage areas. Uh, that will take a few months to complete that work for the first pad, and then we'll move on to the second pad immediately thereafter. Uh, we have recently completed an international tender for supply of materials, tubulars, casing, pipes, if you like, uh, that we need for the drilling program. They have a lead time of several months. Uh, so at this stage, we're anticipating that we will commence drilling uh, by the end of first quarter next year. And in Australia, you have projects off the coast of the Northern Territory. What's taking place there? It is a, uh, an opportunity that we developed using our very, very good technical team. Uh, we were successful in attracting partners for it. Uh, the French super major Total and Australia's Santos, uh, they jointly agreed to fund a 3D seismic acquisition over the block at a cost of uh, five or six million dollars uh, a couple of years ago, for which they received the right to take 80% of the block in return for funding an exploration well. 
Uh, unfortunately, that didn't occur earlier this year, and we're now looking for new partners to work with us to drill that exploration well. And there's some very, very capable and very uh, sizable entities in our data room at the moment. Now let's talk about your financials and strategy. Can you provide a snapshot of your funding position? Currently, uh, as we've announced, we have, I think, uh, it's uh, approximately uh, $5 million in the bank. We have uh, received our back costs from Son and Gold, our partner in Block 9 in Cuba. We had spent about $5 million Australian dollars. Uh, doing the work we did in Cuba before we attracted them as a partner into the project. Part of our commercial terms were that they would repay us those costs when they came in. The $5 million that we've received back from Sonangol, we have a 30% interest in this block, but we only pay 15% of the costs. So that $5 million is roughly equivalent to that 15%. Plus, out of the total well budget, there is an amount that is allocated to the operator for project management. So that's the other benefit. We receive some funding out of the budget, which we use to cover the cost of our project management team. So our funding position is good. And at this stage, we are well on track to getting this first well spotted, as I said, next quarter. And to the last question now, Andrew, where would you like to see the company over the next couple of years? So success at either of either the wells in Cuba or in Beehive in Australia or in any of our other projects that we've got on foot that would allow us to start earning income uh, would be something our board rates very highly, as would our shareholders, I'm sure. Uh, the other thing is that there is to be a, an assessment made in the energy industry uh, about the future of oil and gas companies and the pivoting that most people are seeing with the majors towards renewable energies. Uh, that's something, you know, we keep a very close eye on as well. My ambitions very much to, to add another uh, arrow to our quiver along those lines that gives our shareholders more diversity and more access to broader funding sources in the future. Andrew Purcell, thanks so much for the introduction. Thank you very much for your time.